Hey everyone, today we're going to take a look at how you can enhance the security of your Pi-hole installation by managing your own recursive DNS server. To accomplish that, we're going to be using Pi-hole and Unbound. So in specific, this tutorial will show you how to install the Unbound portion, but if you haven't installed Pi-hole yet, I have a tutorial. I will leave a pop-up for that now. Um, we're basically going to be doing all of this on a Raspberry Pi, so feel free to check that out, install Pi-hole if you haven't done that yet, and then come back here. So to understand how Unbound works, we have to first understand how Pi-hole works. So Pi-hole is a DNS ad blocker. So basically what that means is when you go to a web page, the web browser that you're using will utilize Pi-hole as its DNS server. So it will basically be sending out requests to various web addresses. Um, and basically Pi-hole will go through and block any of the web addresses that it finds based on the blocking uh, list that you're currently using. So if you think from a website perspective, it's not going to block the main website because the main website is basically where all the content is. But if it has any ads on that website, it will automatically block those ads as long as that ad is coming from a, uh, a website that is on your blocking list. So in order to accomplish that, what it basically does is it connects to uh, your, your device connects to Pi-hole. And from there, it will filter out all of the bad traffic and then it will send the good traffic to an upstream DNS provider. Now the upstream DNS provider that it uses is based on whoever you specify. So some of the most common ones are Google or Cloudflare, uh, but you can use a few others. There are a few others inside of Pi-hole. So what Unbound does is it allows basically you to be your own DNS server. So rather than sending that uh, DNS request to an upstream provider like Google or Cloudflare, it will basically manage it on its own. So you are managing everything at that point from your Raspberry Pi. You're not forwarding anything upstream. And that's basically a really high level overview of how it works. And it's definitely simplified. So I have written instructions on how you can set this up. I will leave those in the description, but basically everything is being pulled directly from the main uh, pie hole unbound setup guide. All I did is in my written instructions, I stripped out a bunch of the information so you can kind of just run the commands and then go from there. That is not to say that you shouldn't check out the documentation because you should. Um, that's just to say that if you want to just copy and paste the commands, it's in an easy to read format. So to get started, like I said, you first have to have Pi-hole installed on your Raspberry Pi. I will leave another pop-up for that now if you haven't done that yet. After that, you have to ensure that you can either SSH into your Raspberry Pi or you have to connect to it using a keyboard and mouse. Uh, however you normally connect to it is fine, but you just have to get to the terminal. Once you're there, you're going to run a command to install Unbound. And then as soon as that's done installing, you're going to run another command, which is going to get a root.hints file. And basically, it's just going to put it in a directory that it needs to be able to reference. Now, this second command, the wget command, it is Pi-hole's recommendation that you run this every six months. And basically, that root.hints file will periodically change. Uh, they say that it's infrequent, but every now and then you should run this command to get the most recent document. Once that's done, you're going to run a command that is going to create a Pi-hole configuration file, and you're going to paste the contents that are either on my website or the Unbound written instructions into that file, and then you can save it. According to the Unbound documentation, this is basically just telling uh, Unbound to only listen for queries on the local Pi-hole installation, uh, and it's basically using port 5335. Uh, from there, it's also saying to listen to both UDP and TCP requests, and then it verifies the DNSSEC signatures, which we will get to in a little bit, uh, and it discards any of the bad domains that it might find. So that's a really high-level overview. Check out the documentation if you want to learn a little more about that. So once that's done, Unbound is actually fully configured. So we're going to run a command to restart the service, and then we're going to run a dig command to ensure that everything is working as expected. When you run that dig command, you should get a status message that says no error and an IP address. If you get those, it's working properly. The final thing that we're going to check is DNSSEC. So I have a great link on my website that will tell you exactly what DNSSEC is, but if I had to explain it as easily as I could, it basically confirms that the data it received actually came from the server that sent it. This basically validates that the data it receives cannot be modified in between you and the server that sent it. So that is really like a 35,000 foot overview of it. DNSSEC is significantly more complicated than that. 
Um, if you're interested in learning about that, definitely check out that link. There's a great article that will basically explain everything to you, and I think you'll understand it a little bit better. So there are two commands that we're going to run to ensure that DNSSEC is running properly. The first is going to return a serve fail error, and there won't be an IP address. If you run this first command and you receive that, everything is good. When you run the second one, you should receive a message that says no error plus an IP address. Assuming that both of those ran properly, you can be confident that DNSSEC is running properly. So the last thing that we have to do is we have to modify the upstream DNS servers of our PyHole installation. So you have to log into the web portal of PyHole, um, and from there you're going to go to Settings and then DNS. So from here you want to make sure that you uncheck all of the upstream DNS servers, and then you're going to check off Custom 1, and then you're going to add in the IP address 127.0.0.1, pound sign or hashtag if you're younger, uh, 5335. So 127.0.01 is just the local device. So that will be your Raspberry Pi. And then 5335 is the port that we have Unbound Listening on. So as soon as you set all of that up, you can save that. And at that point, you should be using Unbound as your upstream DNS server. So keep in mind, if you have redundant uh, DNS servers, redundant PyHole servers, you will have to configure this on each of the devices. So that is the entire PyHole and Unbound installation process. I'm quickly going to go over some of the benefits of this, and I'm going to go over one of the issues that you might run into, which might give you a reason to not implement this if you want. So first off, Unbound is not something that you have to use. This is really for privacy-focused individuals who want to ensure that any of the upstream DNS servers do not get their requests. So keep in mind that whenever you use a specific upstream DNS server, you're trusting that they're not selling your data or doing things that you don't want them to do with your data. So there are people who flat out do not care who has what information on them. For those people, this is probably not something that you have to configure. Um, if you do care about stuff like that, this is an easy way to ensure that you're basically managing your own DNS server and you don't have to send any of this to an upstream DNS provider. So the main benefit to this is privacy. If you don't care about privacy, you really don't have any reason to implement this. One of the downsides is that because you're running your own DNS server, you might run into a few performance issues. So it might be hard to tell but basically, you might notice that your websites seem to be loading slower than they used to be. If that is the case, it could be from Unbound. So you might not notice it at all. You might have a severe impact. It really depends, but it's something that I want to make you aware of. So hopefully this made sense. Any questions that you guys have, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Thanks so much for watching the video if you made it this far. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, and please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks, guys.